Hello, I am JC and today we are going to try to build yet another Book of the Dead. This time from the 90s movie The Mummy. Oh boy. What they did. Oh my god, it does exist. I think this may be the Book of the Dead. And I say try because this project turned out to be about 30% a failure. But hey, have you heard of that phrase, finish not perfect? This project has been in my to-do list for many many years. Mainly because I always thought it was kind of way too difficult to make with a reasonable amount of effort. This book had an unusual list of problems to be solved. The relatively common list of problem solving that usually go in these kind of books, which are basically all the strange decorations and runes that go in the covers. The weird part, well, the, the even weirder part, which is the fact that the book is completely made out of, well, stone in theory and that the pages are not quite really sewn into the book, but rather they are using some sort of mechanical hinge, like it was some sort of door. But let's just go in order, so I guess part one, building the covers. So my approach to making props is, let's say, very non-canon. I really don't care that much about absolute perfect screen accuracy. I usually go with just I mean, if it looks cool and it has a reasonable amount of elements like in the original, then it's just fine. For example, in the case of the covers, I didn't really spend any time trying to figure out which is the exact real world size of the prop. I just had several pieces of plywood that I bought for another project but never used and they kind of look like they could make a really nice prop, so I just used them. The same goes in this part for the carvings on the covers. I could have gone and take a couple of screenshots and maybe do some vector graphics for these lines, but I just grabbed a piece of paper, just eyeballed all the lines and then grab a router and start carving them. They obviously came out kind of wobbly, especially that ugly line over there, but you will see. I mean, in the end, it's just going to be all hidden beneath the paint and the weathering and the, all the other nice elements. So, hey, who cares? Finished. Not perfect. Step two, making the pages. Yet another aspect of prop making in a very low or non-existent budget is, of course, recycling. Here were another couple of very thin pieces of plywood that a friend of mine was just throwing to the trash, so I just kept them for maybe a couple of years until, hey, they became useful today. You never know when interesting trash is going to become useful trash. This time, since I already had the size of the covers, I just used them as a template to make all the pages. Yes. That is my dog on the table. I mean, what's the point of life without cute animals just running around? Part 3. Making the text. As I usually do when it comes to all these weird ancient texts, I just grab a lot of screenshots from the movie and then retrace them using, I don't know, maybe Photoshop, maybe Clip Studio Paint or some software like that. In this case, there weren't really that many uh, screenshots from the movie where the book was like shown open, so I had to search on the internet for photos from other props and I used that to trace my pages. In the end, I thought I was kind of missing a couple of pages for my book, so I just uh, grabbed a couple of images from the movie and made a page up to that. And for the rest, I went into the replica prop forum where I found a thread where they were actually making like ancient Egyptian pages. So I took a couple of them. Uh, links in the description. In case anyone wants to download all the pages I made and compile, just go into my website at elderprops.com, then go to the downloads menu and just click in the link The Mummy. Or go to the right side of the page and then click on the Mummy banner. Once in there, just click the download button. A bit further down, you can click and see all the thumbnails for the pages. And at the end of the page, I have placed a Google Photos gallery where I have uploaded a couple of the reference photos I used for this project. So after all my pages were ready, I just printed them out, made photocopies of them and used this technique where you can use a glue like Mod Podge to transfer the toner into the wood and then use water to get rid of the paper so you are just left with the toner on the wood. The transfer is not always perfect, but hey, when you're dealing with ancient books, you can always call any error pre-weathering. My original plan was to use a pyrograph to burn all the text in, but that would have taken a long time. And time is the most important part of your budget, and we didn't have any. Once all the text had been transferred into the wood, we just applied a couple of extra uh, layers of, well, first coffee to make it a little bit browner, and then a couple of layers of metallic glittery paint so it would look a little bit more like in our reference photos. 
the whole golden inner pages turned out to be like a massive reference mistake, but yeah, we will get to that. Then, after all the glitter and varnish is applied, all the pages are just left to dry to the next day. Part 4. Making the dreaded hinges. So this was the actual part that prevented me from doing this project for a very long time, since I actually had to sit down, take measurements and be kind of very precise with it. So once I thought I had all the measurements, I did a little vector version in Illustrator so I could print it out and use it since I was actually going to make several copies of the same part. That was the original piece of plywood that I planned on using for the hinges, but according to my measurements it was kind of missing a little bit of space, so I used a piece of the leftovers from the pages and added an extra ply to my plywood. Once my extra plied plywood was ready, I just used some spray adhesive to stack my printouts in onto the wood and then went into the scroll saw. And then, after everything is cut and ready, comes the saddest part of everything, which is of course sanding and sanding and sanding a little bit more. The whole process would have been really nicely done with a laser cutter, but sadly I live in a godforsaken place where such technology is nothing but sci-fi. But hey, let's compensate third world country sadness with a cute puppy. Who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? So finally everything is cut, sanded and ready, and the same annoying process is repeated for the bird hinges that go on top. Once the main shapes were cut, I used a Dremel tool to make a little curve on top, and then just a bunch of epoxy clay to make the actual uh, the eyes and the details on the head of every bird. I was thinking of making just one and then making molds and casting the rest out of resin, but I wasn't sure if it was going to hold the weight of all the books, and I wasn't really quite sure about my skills on mold making, so I just made the rest out of wood and epoxy clay. The other parts were relatively simple since they were only circles or these other water drop shapes, so that was far easier to cut and sand. And yet still annoying. If we wanted to be really accurate with this prop, the hinges on the bottom part of the book actually have uh, shapes and designs, but we just wanted a simple version, so instead we actually used the pyrograph to draw on a little texture so it would look similar to the round parts on the spine of the book. And here is our first test fitting. It's always nice to kind of see what your prop is going to look like in the future. It's useful to see it like that so you can make uh, like last time adjustments and it's great for morale. And then is when we realized that we never actually thought of how are we going to put this whole thing together. The first idea was to use uh, like a stick, just a, a wooden cylinder, but once again, the, the, the covers and the pages were kind of too heavy, so we had to go into the hardware store to get a, a couple of metallic parts. Luckily, we found these really long screws, and we thought we just use a couple of nuts at the beginning and the end. Part 5. Painting. Which is one of my favorite parts, because at least in this project it was really simple. Just a couple of base layers of black, then a couple of metallic layers of gold, and a little bit of copper. Everything is left to dry overnight, and then we can actually start thinking of assembling all the parts together. This was our second test fitting, and it was actually starting to look rather decent. After cutting the screw to the final size of the hinge, we finally started making all the decorations for the cover. The process is rather simple. Just make vector versions of all the parts, print them out, and use the same technique as with the pages which means using Mod Podge to stick the paper into the wood and then using water to remove the paper so the toner is left on the surface of the wood. Just like we did in the hinges, for this part we use a pyrograph to burn in all the characters and lines because we not only needed the graphics on the wood but we actually needed them to be grooves. Later we added a couple of layers of paint and a little bit of varnish on top. In the case of the star shaped decoration which serves as the keyhole, we made it out of two parts since we wanted the hole to be in an actual different level, just in case at some point in the far future we decide to actually build the key of the book. And now for the scarabs that go in the cover. For this part we used a really clever technique we learned from build run from punished props. 
You see, if you make really shallow cuts in your foam, once you apply heat, they will open up and you will be left with these fantastic grooves. And just to be sure the scarves were significant enough, we added a second layer of foam and used a bit of fire to seal up all the borders around them. After that, just like the rest of the parts of the book, apply a couple of layers of paint and varnish and we're ready for the final assembly. To join the pages to the hinge, we actually use a little strip of leather that went around the water drop shape parts, and then we stuck that into the wood with a little bit of super glue and a couple of tiny nails. Then of course the final part is weathering. For this we just use a little bit of water down acrylic paint and the book is more or less done. Now let's take a look at a couple of examples of how this of how this prop is a shame compared to its movie counterpart. First of all, the original book is supposed to have the bird hinges on both sides of the book. Sadly, we finished assembling this at maybe 3.30 or 4 in the morning and at the convention where we are going to show the book was later that day. And building and assembling another couple of hinges would have taken at least another afternoon of work. So that had to do. And now let's talk about the major problem of the book. The fact that, turns out, in the Lord of the Movies, there are not one, but two Books of the Dead. The one with black covers and black pages, which, which I thought was the only one, and another one, with its golden outside and inside, which is the one from the photos I was referencing. So, turns out, we have the covers of the black one and the insides of the golden one. And we realized that, more or less, at the last part when we were weathering, and we noticed, like, why the hell are these, these pages black and not golden, like in the photos? So there you go. There were many other tiny mistakes, but I guess those two huge mistakers are a good show of how things went with this project. But in the end, literally no one remembered either the book or the movie, so everyone was really pleased and impressed with our prop. And it looks really nice in our house, so yeah, count that as a success. 75% success. Finish not perfect! Mm -hmm.